All right, we've got just enough light to check out one more spot today. It's a really cool track site. This is in the Morrison Formation. So this is the latest of the late Jurassic. This is right before a big extinction event happened. Um, this is a time when there's big giant sauropods, lots of theropods, um, Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus. It's right before there was a big faunal turnover in the Northern Hemisphere. Sauropods sort of declined after this. Ornithischians kind of took over after this. Big things were in the air. So the outcrop that we're looking at, this is the salt wash member of the Mars information. Big sandy meandering streams, all kinds of morphology. Interestingly, a lot of what we used to think were Parade streams turned out to be meandering with the advent of Google Earth because we can look at the aerial patterns of the ancient stream systems and see big scroll bars, not braided streams. That's neither here nor there for now. We're going to go take a look at a famous track site of a sauropod and a theropod. So, with the minimal light we've got left, we're going to see what we can find. All right, the light is absolutely perfect right now. And with my fancy new selfie stick, I can elevate and show you all what we're looking at. These are sauropod tracks. These things like Diplodocus, Camarasaurus, long neck, big body, elephant-like legs, long tail. And this critter was walking basically that direction. It kind of turned a little bit and started walking in that direction. You know, a lot of people have asked, well, how are dinosaur tracks preserved on a surface? This still has ripple marks on it, by the way. Some people have argued, well, that's impossible. I've had people comment on some of my videos, like, oh, that's absurd, impossible. Well, it's really pretty basic geology. This was sediment, this was wet sediment, sand in a stream, rippled bars in a fluvial system. Dinosaur comes stomping along, walks through. Water level continues to go down. Remember, streams are two-phase systems. They're either in flood, when you deposit the sediment, or as the water goes down, the sediment just kind of sits there. It can mineralize very quickly. It can form a crust. It can harden up during a dry season, especially in a flashy system like these were, dry land systems. So the animal walk through, water goes down, sediment forms a crust, gets nice and hard, almost like cement. Next flood comes in, fills it in with, you can actually see mud. There's the mud and the silt and the sand. Then another channel body comes over on top of that. This stuff piles in decade after decade, millennium after millennium, piling up, piling up. Why do you think archaeologists always have to go in and dig stuff off of their pottery shards and their human dwellings? Sediment fills things in really rapidly. So the sediment fills in, fills in, fills in. Before long, you have hundreds of feet, thousands of feet of sediment, tens of thousands of feet. That stuff gets compacted, compressed. Well, yeah, but how did it get up here? Well, that's when you have mountain building and tectonics. If you have big faults, like the Moab Fault and other faults forcing the land up, all that sediment comes right back up and it's eroding. As it's lifting up, it's getting weathered and eroded until eventually we just happen to get this layer exposed. We've lost tens of thousands of layers of younger sediment on top of this. We've lost the rest of the Cretaceous, all the Cenozoic. We're stripping it down. This is the Morrison. Below it will keep stripping down as long as the land keeps rising. That's how you expose a surface with dinosaur tracks. It's not rocket science. Let's see what else we've got. Here's the new sign they have with the tracks. Um, you can see the dinosaurs are all in the new style with all kinds of frills and feathers and dewlaps and stuff. It's kind of cool. You know, they might have even looked like that. But it gives you a good idea of essentially what was happening. These guys were stomping across a rippled sandy bar in a fluvial system like that. So again, flashy discharge, ephemeral bar, leads to great preservation of tracks. Yeah, these are really great because if you look, you can actually see the pushed up mound of sediment around the track. So the animal was so heavy when it pushed its foot in, it squirted up all this material. So it created these big push-up rims around the tracks, like a heel almost. Very cool stuff. Over in this part of the trackway, the lighting, eh, we'll see what it's like. It's not so bad. There's a retoed theropod, just like the ones we saw in the Navajo. 
In a different video, I showed you some early Jurassic theropods, about 200 million years old. This is the Morrison. It's about 150 million years old. So the tracks I showed you in the Navajo sandstone are 50 million years older than these. The Lophosaurus was ancient history by the time this guy made it. This is probably Allosaurus, the most common theropod found in the Morrison formation. Makes sense, it would be leaving tracks. So there's one back here, right here. You can kind of see it by my foot. The lighting is not great for that one. We're starting to lose light. There's this one. Then there's this one. So it had a pretty good stride on it. There's one last one before the outcrop disappears under the eroding sediment. So here's a sign claiming that the dinosaur was kind of limping because the tracks are a little bit out of sync. Um, there's a whole lot of reasons an animal might be stepping and walking funny. Uh, it certainly is possible that it was limping, but you know, take these things with a grain of salt because it's really hard to interpret behavior, especially from something that we don't have alive today. Those are the dinosaur tracks. Now, I'm a little bit worried. The light's not great. We're losing the sun fast. I was hoping to show you guys a bunch of other stuff out here. It's still tomorrow. So tomorrow morning, I can come out, see what I can get. If not, I just happen to have some really good photographs of that stuff. So maybe we can splice it on. Whatever happens, here come some additional tracks that nobody that I'm aware of has ever reported out here. You're going to see them for the first time. And I'm going to show you a bunch of invertebrate traces that, again, as far as I know, nobody's reported from here. So you're in for a treat. Here they come. Well, as it usually happens in the field, things didn't go to plan. And I wasn't able to get out the next morning. But here are some really nice photos of the tracks. So we're seeing some trackways of unknown dinosaurs on the surface walking off into the horizon. And there's a bunch of cross-sectional tracks preserved in the mudstone of the floodplain. These are preserved as natural casts with sand filling, where the animal stepped in, removed its foot, and we made those natural casts. And then we have the invertebrate traces. There's these vertical burrows with little segments made by something probably like a cicada or a burrowing beetle larva. There's a whole bunch of vertical chambered burrows like this that might have been made by wasps and beetles, or even spiders and scorpions, which are fairly common in the Jurassic Mars information. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I will try to get back out there and get some honest-to-goodness video of all these features and more. So stay tuned, and keep on rocking.